Hello and welcome to Talking Points here on Balls.ie in partnership with Sky Sports GEA. Every Monday we will be here to look back on the GEA weekend that was. I'm Mick McCarthy. Mark Farrelly is swallowing around Canada at the moment, so he is not here. Luckily for us, Gavin Cooney, of, also of Balls.ie, is. Yeah, lucky for me as well. I picked a pretty good weekend. It was a proper championship weekend, wasn't it? It was yeah. wet. Uh, and it was very, very windy. I was also pretty wild, and probably the wildest scenes uh, were Wexford Park on Saturday night, uh, Wexford Shock Kilkenny in the Leinster Championship, uh, live on Sky Sports. Uh, these were the scenes of full time. And scenes reminiscent, Nicky, of those great days of 96 all over again. Fantastic supporters, and you know, you see there, Lee Chain in the middle of them, you know, how was colossal there tonight for, for Wexford. Really, when Kilkenny got the goal and got their second goal, you know, they looked like they were getting back into it and you know Lee Chin won the next puck out on his own took on a couple of Kilkenny fellas and put the ball over the bar and that was really the start of the response and to show that they really meant business tonight and it was a great victory for, for Wexford. Yeah so it's great to see Wexford fans actually having the opportunity to do that it's been so long I love the Wexford players riling them up as well that was just fantastic so incredible scenes one person who I'm not sure was so delighted with the scenes was Kilkenny legend and Sky Sports analyst JJ Delaney, who was forced to do his post-match analysis surrounded by these lunatics. Uh, let's take you down at pitch side amongst uh, that incredible atmosphere here as uh, JJ Delaney, he loves this. Uh, if you can hear us, JJ, uh, just a little reaction to that and naming your board gosh energy man of the match. Yeah, uh, look, unbelievable finish from uh, Wexford there as well. All, all over the field now, they were actually on top of their field. The better team definitely won today, there's no point it's any different. There were top performers all over the field, but we had to give man the match there to Leach in. He gave an exhibition, and when he was doing centre forward, he came back out midfield. I think he dictated the whole game. He just pulled all the strings. Kenny got a goal, and Leach in went up got a vital point at a particular time. So definitely Leach in was man the match, absolutely brilliant. Uh, uh, picking up uh, on this performance from this Wexford side, how far do you see them progressing now in the Championship, given how much they came back time and time again in the yeah. second half? Yeah, it was absolutely brilliant, especially with the Kilkenny got the two goals, and then it wasn't wasn't Kilkenny that kicked on; it was Wexford that kicked on. They were absolutely brilliant. Now, in fairness, the heart and the, the work rate on this team, they're buying into the system, and they'll take a big team that's going to beat them. Look, you know, Galway are off to you. We're expecting Galway to come over, but Galway looking at this game tonight now won't won't um, be looking forward to playing this Wexford team. So it's heartening to see uh, that one of the great GA traditions of load of people standing in the background of an on-pitch interview. That's safe for generations now. Everybody there was so young. Yeah, so young. Now, if you look at this, you have to analyse this in detail. Okay. Fair play to the kid there up on top. I think a lot of attention is going to be on him. He did his dab. He tried a few different things. He was in prime position up on his shoulder. The person I want to point out, though, is a guy who started off right behind JJ. Okay. Burst his way into <laughs> prime position, which is the most important thing in this situation. He's wearing sunglasses, so he's not being distracted by the antics yeah. around him. He can make sure that he stays with the task at hand which is to look dead at the camera for the yeah. entire time with as much of a faceless expression on him <laughs> as possible that guy in the sunglasses achieved that better than anybody in that and I, I commend him for his work in this particular I scene. love that video of JJ but I actually preferred his half time bit to camera um, on Sky on the touchline so they were they cut it to JJ on the touchline they were waiting for Wexford to emerge and there was only one person in the background of that JJ bit to camera uh, but it was a certain Brian Cody who kind of walk into shot and out of shot and Prowling into like shot. a big cat. Uh, he reminded me of, uh, of Homer Simpson shouting Flanders as, you know, Ned Flanders. And Rachel Wise did say, oh, JJ, watch out, there's a Cody behind your back. But just on Cody, while the Wexford story is amazing and heartening and it'll keep us going throughout the summer, that was one of Kilkenny's poorest performances under possibly the greatest hurling manager of all time. Uh, so what went wrong? Uh, well, James O'Connor and Ollie Canning asked that question on Sky Sports after the game. Uh, let's just get a, a little bit more reaction and pick up on, on what JJ said about Kilkenny and what their plan now will be through the qualifiers and, and how Brian Cody can change what they ultimately did wrong today. I just felt that maybe Kilkenny, we were discussing it there during the second half, they just seemed to have one plan and that was hit every puck out long as far as they could down yeah. the field. I felt they had a spare man in the half back line around the midfield and maybe on a couple of occasions they could have played that spare man and try and build an attack from the middle of the field. Some of the balls, in, in some of the long puck outs and long strikes into the full four line, they did work out, but a lot of the time the Wexford defence came up, just gobbled up that ball and came out of defence with it. So I just thought 
Kilkenny were a bit one dimensional today. I thought Wexford played it different ways. They played it short at times and then they went long. And nobody, I suppose. Yeah, they look, and they looked leg weary in the second half. I mean, at one stage it, re it resembled a heavyweight contest where they, you know both sides were really punching each other out. But Wexford finished stronger, and you just wonder, you know, they've had to go to the well time and time again. There was always going to come a day when you know the energy levels just weren't going to be there. Walter Walsh made no impact on the game. Richie Hogan, we spoke about, made no impact on the game, and it doesn't look as if they're going to be able to find the energy to come back. And I think. It's, it's funny, when we look back on the interview that Martin Story gave before the game, he said if Wexford were with Kilkenny coming into the second half, he felt that they would be younger and they would have more hunger than Kilkenny, yeah. which was a, a brave thing to say, but it, 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 it came true in the end. Are Kilkenny still All-Ireland contenders is probably the biggest question to come out of Saturday night's game. Uh, you can have your say, by the way, there's a poll on both of at the moment, so get voting on that. And I'm now going to ask that question to our esteemed editor, Mick McCarthy. Are Kilkenny still All-Ireland contenders? Um, yes, just because they're Kilkenny, but based on that performance, like they only lost by three points. I was kind of even just looking at the result again there, I'm surprised, because it was just so abject. Mm. They scored three points after 26 minutes. TJ Reid and Colin Fenley were basically the only players that like really showed up in any kind of real way. Some of their shooting was wayward. They had to put on, as you mentioned before we came on air, mm. like a sub-goalkeeper up full forward to try and make a difference. The lads talked about it there, just one option of bumping the ball up as far as they can go. They look leg-weary. They did look very leg-weary. They, obviously, they, they have the excuse almost as a poor choice of phrase, but there are extenuating circumstances in this fact that there are people coming back from long-term injuries. So, yeah. a poor Rick Walsh, and he got hooked before half-time, yeah. and even Ger Aylward, yeah. who's more kind of Ger Wayward, because I think he had three balls into his hand, and he poked each of them uh, further wide than the last. Yeah. So there's and Wexford were good that. as well. Yeah. Like, you know, um, but I think you know, you've got Mick Fenley still has to come back into that team. Richie Hogan, I don't think, will ever have as quiet a game mm. as he had on Saturday night. So look, there are, I would, wouldn't rule them out yet, but I'd be really worried because the performances in the league with these performances, plus the All-Ireland Final last year, I just wonder where the next generation is coming from because yeah. all the players who were there and did play well, Killian Buckley, Colin Fenley, they've all been around for a long time. We're waiting on experienced lads to come back. Yeah, fascinating stuff. Uh, there was also packed weekend of football action. And now eagle-eyed viewers will realise that I'm here and that Mark Farley is not. But that didn't stop him from watching Cavan's defeat to Monaghan. He watched it from Toronto. And he also sent us this clip after the game. Life, I mean, what is it all about? You're born, one in four billion chance. Your parents do their best trying to raise you. You go to school, you go to college, you get an education, you try and live by the rules. You get a job, you try to be mannerly to people, you scrimp and you scrape and you claw and you try and scale that ladder of life and try and do it the right way. And then Conor McManus does something ridiculous yet again and everything falls apart. Look, I'm sick of this now, right? Okay, go on. Week in, week out, all we do is talk about Cavan, like they're bloody the second coming of Dublin or something, right? This is ridiculous. He's after going off to Canada, he's taken a week off, grand, happy enough, but no, we still have to have a minute of Cavan waffle on here. And also, what's he talking about? Okay. Cavan lost the game to a better team, they put in a good performance, but Conor McManus didn't do anything magical, he scored a fairly standard championship goal if you're one of the best forwards Mick, in the Mick, I'm going to have to... They're in the qualifiers now, I don't want to hear about... I'm going to have to put a Cossie because what you've done there, uh, Mick, you've fallen into the trap that Mark left before he left for Toronto. We're still talking about Cavan, so we're not yeah. going to talk about the well done, more. Um, yeah, well done, Monaghan. Um, loads of other uh, and better football, if I'm allowed to say that, Mark, uh, on around the country. Galway Mayo in the Connex semi-final later that afternoon. Um, I, this was notable to me that in the sense that nothing has really changed in a year. Uh, Mayo beaten by Galway again in the Connex semi-final. Galway obviously go on to the final now. Um, Mayo have a this horrible trek through the qualifiers. You wonder, will it be as kind last year? They got two home games last year. Um, and even down to the kind of a game, yet again, Soul Till, a game in Soul Till in the Connacht Championship is battered by this biblical wind. Yeah, but you know, wind has been a, a, a talking point for every game this week. There were six games okay. across hurling football, everything. It was about the wind, you know, the wind is worth five points, the wind is worth this. Well, I've done a bit of number crunching. Oh, so we know, I know well, we exactly, exactly how much, exactly the, how wind much the wind is, is right? Okay. Six games this week across hurling football, the teams with the wind scored 481. Okay. The teams against the wind, Scored 475. So that's 
Six points. Six points in the difference. Mass. The wind wins by six points over six games. It's one point a game. One point a game. Exactly That's all the wind is how worth. much Galway won by when they had the, with the wind at their backs, they were one point up and they won by a point. That's all the wind is worth. I'm sick of this talk about, oh Jesus, they'll be very disappointed. They're only winning by 12 points yeah. at half time. That won't be enough with this wind. Okay, so can we, uh, better football and better hurling is I what I think now that, we've, now that we have objectively worked out that the wind is worth a single point, we might yeah. be able to you know, sell this as a kind of stat to various, various county teams around the country when they're deciding whether to play with the wind or against exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. Um, Number crunch. But the most interesting thing about the winds this weekend was the fact that Cork just kind of weren't that bothered with it. They had the wind at their backs against Tip and scored a single point in an entire half's football. Uh, they went yeah. 40 points without scoring and then racked up 1-9 uh, yeah. when kicking into the wind against kind Tip. Kind of skews my stat a little bit, but you know, ah, you know, they did it, they were able to do it. Yeah, so that was such a weird game, 1-9, one 1-10 one to 1-9. Yeah. Um, but in the most incredibly competitive province. This is the thing that's gone under the radar. This is sensational because the Cork have won all their games by a single point. Yes. And the only game in the championship that has, wasn't won by a single point was the Kerry Clare game yesterday. And that looks like it could be the mother of all shocks exactly. for about 40, 45 minutes. Yeah, Kerry were down to 14 men. Clare were playing with the wind, which doesn't <laughs> matter as we found out. And uh, we're level at half time. And yeah, like, I mean, Clare definitely gave it a real game. It was closer than the six points made out. It was a good, good competitive game. If you look at Ulster, where I think the average defeat this year is about eight or nine points, yeah. and you look at that where there was four one-point games followed by that six-point game, Munster is probably the most competitive province now. Nobody talks about it. And it's left us with this incredibly novel pairing <laughs> in the final of Cork and Kerry. Uh, there was one other game. There was one other game, played like a dark, dreary, drab, ten-all draw between Westmead and Offaly. They'll have to do it all over again to see who's going to get hammered to Dublin in the Leinster semi-final. I think the, uh, this is not a very good game of football. Um, the Westmead Twitter account summed it up, I think, best, Mick. Uh, whoever the poor old Westmead PR always uh, tweeted, total garbage from both sides. Horrible to watch. I love when the Twitter accounts, the Wexford GA uh, Twitter account, by the way, played a blinder on Saturday night as well. It's always worth keeping an eye on them during games. Yeah, they had Kilkenny in the cat flap rather than the back door, I think. Okay, so we don't have much time left. I just want to get to our fans of the week. One that I saw was mentioned on Twitter by Mark Wall, which is an incredible piece of fandom. Wexford are taking a sideline cut in the game on Saturday night, and this Kilkenny fan, from the stand, decides to interfere in the game, sticks out his hurl and tries to hook the Wexford player taking the sideline cut. Really incredible piece. You can see him there. Just look, the hurley's coming out. The hurley's coming out, he's ready. He's lined up. Oh, he just missed it. Now, I will say, thankfully, he just missed it. If, if he had connected, we'd be talking about the game being in disrepute, Kilkenny being sore losers, all kinds of things. It'd be a national scandal. But the fact that he missed, but tried, tried to do that for the his crack. team when things were going badly, makes him my nomination for fan of the week. I, I have a nomination. I kind of just want to mention him as a mark of respect. I don't necessarily think he deserves to win. Um, it was Enda Kenny's final Mayo game as Taoiseach this weekend. Uh, they didn't win the All-Ireland when he was in Taoiseach. Uh, they haven't won it since he has been Taoiseach. Uh, they may never win it. Uh, so as I said, Enda, uh, one, of the, one, of the great, one of the great Mayo fans. Yeah. Um, and I did want to give him his due this weekend. Yeah, his nomination more of a Lifetime Achievement Award for oh, yeah, being okay, such okay. a great he fan oh, over win. the years. He can't Nothing win. specific about this week, really. So I've got one more nomination. Okay. This one I think might be the winner, right? He's not usually a fan. He was reduced to being a fan this week. He was suspended, locked away in his box, but when he got out, my God, did he enjoy it. <laughs> David Fitzgerald is my nomination. No, no one at Wexford Park, I think, enjoyed the game more than he did. After being locked away in his tinted window box, specially made for him, he got out, got into the tunnel, celebrated with all the Wexford players. There he is, wrapped around Conor McDonald. Didn't go onto the pitch as well, yeah, which is kind of yeah. pretty impressive. You know, one of the only Wexford fans that obeyed that particular GA rule. So yeah. he's obeying the rules, he's fan of the week, he'll be back on the sideline next time. It's, it's going to be Davy's year, I think. Yeah, we'll, we'll end on another triumph for Davy Fitzgerald. That's all we have time for on this week's edition of Talking Points. Uh, just before we go, a reminder that Mead and Kildare in the Leinster Football Championship is your Sky Sports game this weekend. It's on Saturday, uh, Sky on Air from 6, and then we'll be back next Monday to review that and all the weekend's action. Uh, to leave you, uh, the Leitrim Hurlers took their first ever trip to Croke Park this week. Uh, they took on the might of Warwickshire in the Laurie Maher Cup final. A poet and playwright, local poet and playwright, Seamus O'Rourke, uh, recorded this poem that he sent to us to mark the occasion. Leitrim and Warwickshire in the Laurie Maher Cup. The clash of Sapley Nash, you couldn't make it up. And in Croke Park, 
not exactly our backyard, but two teams going at it hard and fair, and two teams who have been there before. Well, Leithram footballers in 94, but this time we have sticks and an Iraqi corner forward thrown into the mix. Yes, Zach Moradi, an Iranian Kurdish refugee, born in another parish, but he's one of us. Write out his name in Irish and put him on the bus. And Crow Park echoed loud. This huge prize, this smallish crowd. And victory is where we set our sights. But resources in Leitrim are scarce, not even traffic lights, let alone Hawkeye or broadband or this amount of grass jazes at some size of a field. And our fitness couldn't last. And although we looked inside Aladdin's cave, and although we fought proud and brave, those qualities only go so far, and the best team won the Lowry Ma. But don't mock the minnows and what they've done. For now we walk, one day we'll run. <laughs>